My wife's grandmother, she was a volunteer at a school, and she got friendly with the sports writer, one of the major newspapers, and Thelma loved Ted Williams. So, Jeff, tell me about your friend that you brought today. Well, my friend is a Ted Williams jersey. Mm -hmm. It was uh, passed down to us from grandmother, uh, who, who uh, had a friend who was a sports writer in Boston. He knew that she loved Ted Williams, so he got her the jersey and uh, as, a, as a gift, thanking her for uh, taking care of his uh, child. So Really? Yeah. How would the sports writer have gotten this jersey, well, do you the, think? The story that I was told was that the, he just asked Ted for a jersey, took it off his back, and gave it to him. So was it well known that your grandmother had a crush on, on Teddy Ballgame? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. He was quite a, quite a player, so. What year is this from? 1946. 1946, and we have on the back here Williams number, number nine, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And why did you think it was from 1946? Uh, the patch on the sleeve is uh, right. the only year that that patch was uh, on a okay. jersey. So. Oh, interesting. What you brought in is a Ted Williams, appears to be game-worn Red mm -hmm. Sox home jersey. And the one thing that Teddy never accomplished, Ted Williams in his career, yeah. was winning a World Series. He came closest in 1946, but he yeah. really changed the Red Sox. If you look at the Red Sox mm -hmm. after they sold Babe Ruth in 1920, the Yankees yeah. Fortunes ascended. Red Sox unfortunately went the other way and they ended up selling off a lot more players. So when Tom Yockey bought the team in 1933, they were pretty much in the basement of the American League East. He changed everything. He started putting money into the team. And his real coup was signing Williams from the Pacific Coast League San Diego Padres in 1939. He was the slugger of the American League. And in 42, he won the Triple Crown, which is when a hitter leads the league in batting average, home runs, and RBIs. That season, he led with 36 home runs, 137 RBIs, and a 356 batting average. 43 to 45, he went into service, mm -hmm. serving in World War II, and came back out in 46. Left again for the Korean War in 52, 53, came back, played until 1960. So mm -hmm. let's talk about this. You said 1946, and that was a great year. Yep. But um, you're wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> you are wrong. This patch, actually, this health patch, that's from 1942. Oh, okay, great. And they used it for one year. So this is actually a 42 Red Sox home jersey. Perfect. Let's take a look at the label because the tagging is very important to determining the year mm -hmm. and the authenticity of the jersey. So you see the Williams stitched in there and you also see Spalding and McAuliffe. That's the first year, 1942, of the label for Spalding and Tim McAuliffe. And these are all the things we have to look at. Mm -hmm. Another thing we look at this jersey, have there been any alterations? Mm -hmm. There are no alterations in terms of this appears to be original, the number nine in the back appears to be original. As you can see, it appears to fit me in terms of the mm -hmm. length. It was definitely altered. It should be about this long, okay? Oh, really? Okay. But it's still a 1942 Ted Williams game use, as far as we can see, there's no red flags, home jersey from one of the greatest hitters of all time. It's one of the earliest Ted Williams known jerseys. I think it's pretty cool. It is very cool. And I have to tell you, alterations and all, I'd put an auction estimate minimum 200 to $250,000. Wow, that's great. Quarter million. All right. What do you do with that? <laughs> if it didn't have the alterations, it would more likely be in the four hundred dollars to $600,000 range. Wow. I would insure it for no less than half a million, 500,000. Damn, it's great. I don't know where the piece went, but <laughs> we could find it. <laughs> Put it back on. <laughs>